They came from different places around the world to stop the Russian terror. They left their safe and peaceful daily life behind in order to protect the innocent by force of weapons and courage. They can quit and leave at any moment, but most of them will fight till victory. They are doing the impossible on the battlefield, and they keep returning to the front line after being seriously wounded. They are the salt of the earth of our civilization. They are soldiers of the International Legion for the Defense of Ukraine. I've been an Israeli citizen since 1990, when I was 13. I lived in Israel. After we knew of the full-scale Russian invasion, the decision to come to Ukraine grew momentarily. I crossed the border on the 24th of March 2022 with the intention to join the armed forces of Ukraine and take active part in liberating Ukraine. It was my exact purpose to fight for the liberation of Ukraine. The very idea of Russian military vehicles standing close to the place where he had grown up was disgusting to him. I could not imagine back then, and I cannot imagine it now that there might be an enemy tank standing in front of my school, number 68, in Odessa. It must be some kind of science fiction. For me, there is no difference. Would it be a tank or a UFO? That's all. I was ready to do everything it takes to prevent this from happening. And I'm still ready to do everything it takes. Since Hanadi was an Israeli citizen, recruitment officers offered him enlistment in the International Legion for the Defense of Ukraine. I signed the contract in the middle of July. By the end of August, we were already deployed on the front line in Kharkiv area. Hennady, a soldier in the International Legion for the Defense of Ukraine. Military experience. Military service in Israel Defense Forces. Countering the full-scale Russian invasion with the armed forces of Ukraine. Military occupational specialty. Driver and shooter. Special skills. Handling light weapons, assault rifles, machine guns driving different types of vehicles in high-risk environment. Typical combat missions, reconnaissance, assault operations, medical evacuation, logistic support under enemy fire. Military awards, Steel Cross, Medal for Bravery in Combat, Badge of Merit. Prior to the full-scale Russian invasion, Hennady used to run his own small business in Israel. He was living a quiet life. After serving in the army in 1996, I began to work as a truck driver. I delivered construction materials. Then I started my own business. I had my own truck. It was a calm and peaceful life. It did not prevent him from becoming a trained military professional in short time. I had one of the simplest roles, as some might say, although it, it's not exactly so. I'm a driver and a shooter. I feel great driving a vehicle. Artillery shelling, shrapnel flying here and there, bumps on the road, all of that did not bother me. It's just the way it is. Some of the experience he gained in Israel was quite helpful in Ukraine. In my muscle memory, I preserved some of the skills from my compulsory military service in Israel. Soon, the soldier had an opportunity to refine his skills in actual combat. Gradually, our raids became more and more serious. We were moving forward. The Legion fights on the front line. I guess it's not a secret to anyone. The multinational team turned out to be highly professional and efficient. People coming from all over the world, United States, France, Brittany, Italy, the post-Soviet countries. Actually, all the soldiers in the Legion had strong motivation to fight till the victory, and nothing has changed since that time. 100% of the Legion's staff are volunteers. These people are not interested in money. They came here voluntarily to fight for the liberation of Ukraine. 
Due to the spirit of true brotherhood, legionnaires are able to accomplish even the hardest missions. Atmosphere of Legion можно описать одним единственным, но очень красочным примером, когда утром. The atmosphere in the Legion might be described by the following example. It's four o'clock in the morning. We're gathering in the backyard to have a coffee and a cigarette. A Canadian asks a German, got the light? The guy gives him a lighter and he replies in Ukrainian, meaning thanks a lot. Then someone else joins and says, meaning good morning. I saw this happening many times. Hanadi often had to work under enemy fire, but it did not stir any strong emotions for him. All of this is unpleasant. You get shot at, you hear the whistling sound and so on, but I don't really remember anything I would call really terrifying. When the fighting was finally over, our hero would sometimes want it to start again. Sometimes you feel dissatisfaction. I would call it a half-finished glass feeling. Sometimes it's like, is it all? Okay, let's go then. No strong feelings. We always returned from our missions with our conscience clear. We knew that we completed our mission, you know, how a man feels when going home after a work shift. All right, it's finished. Let's go home. Nothing else. If we were in close proximity to the enemy, then we might go look for some trophies. And that's all. The legionnaires have been amazed by young patriots of Ukraine, much more than by fighting and shooting. There have been many bright moments as regards to combat operations per se. You stop paying much attention to them as time goes by. You get adrenaline rush during the first one, maybe the second one as well. But for example, here we are driving through a town. The kids are standing there waving the flags, shouting Slava Ukraini, you know. It just touches you to the core. These things shouldn't be happening. Children should not be witnessing the kinds of things that are going on now. It's scary. I lived all my life close to the war. In Israel, the war actually never stops. But seeing these kids, so sincere in their patriotism, waving Ukrainian flags, Slava Ukraini, that was powerful. These are the moments I remember, and it's not only me. Everyone paid attention to this. The soldier gives praise to his teammates and to the commander. There was one episode. I'm not going into details about the mission and our objective. We had spent a night in the wood. It was chilly. We didn't have any camping equipment with us since our initial plans were different. So our team, including some newcomers from the United States, had to sleep on the ground. And our team leader, who is a great guy, by the way, he's still in Ukraine, I have a lot of respect for him. He's a Latvian citizen. He went to the nearest village, seven kilometers from there, under fire, of course. There was a tank shooting at us and some something smaller as well, but it was the tank we remember the most. So our commander brought us a pile of blankets to keep us warm. This is a true battlefield commander. Based on his own experience, the legionnaire has made his opinion of the Russian invaders. Once we had a chance to evaluate the enemy, when we were in one town in the east, we seized some warehouse, I don't know what it was, some hangar filled with ammunition, but a special type of ammunition, gas spray, shields, batons, our first impression was, what kind of army is this? Who came here to fight us? What were you guys thinking? There were a lot of bullets and grenades as well. It was the police gear brought by the Russians to be used against the civilians that made him really angry. When we saw these police shields and tear gas, I got really angry. The legionnaires had defeated well-equipped Russian units. 
Мы взяли много трофеев. And another case was when we seized a lot of trophies, new AK rifles, probably it was some special operations unit. Naturally, we felt ourselves proud. We had beaten some special forces team. But generally speaking, why should we bother evaluating the enemy? We have to kill them. They will be evaluated by the forensic examiners. And we have a different job to do. Courage and persistence of the Legion soldiers have many times crushed the resistance of the Russian troops. Если соотношение сил меньше чем один к десяти, их десять. I can just say they do not make a decent adversary. If they don't have a numerical superiority of at least ten to one, they will try to avoid the fight. They will either retreat or shoot, disappear, and then flee. I wouldn't say their motivation is strong. I don't know. Maybe it's different somewhere else. But judging from our experience, I don't see the Russians as a strong, motivated enemy. In the war, no one is insured against all accidents. Ironically, Hanadi's eagerness for combat and his high temper eventually let him down. There were firefights in the forest belts between the fields. Here is our forest belt, and theirs is across the field. I heard two bullets flying past me, we shot back, and that was all. They retreated. My last combat mission, when I got blown up by a landmine, we seized the enemy trench, which was our main objective. Moreover, we fixed our bayonets because we wanted to go hand-to-hand -hand combat with them. We'd been told that it's Wagner mercenaries and we wanted to, you know, but they fled, just like that. <laughs> the legionnaires were on a super difficult mission of assaulting the enemy's positions. We had been tasked with assaulting enemy trenches. I was rushing ahead recklessly and forgot to look down and watch my step. I even saw the mine that blew me up, but it was too late. It was a Mon landmine standing on a wooden stump. I saw it, I leapt forward, and the explosion came, and that was it. There was a small firefight. Our guys ran forwards, I crawled back because I was wounded. After getting wounded, our hero went through a long struggle for his life. I remember crawling on my arms, shouting, Medic! Medic! in all languages. I was in pain. When I crawled out from this forest belt into a sunflower field, I heard people speaking Ukrainian, meaning that they were from another brigade, not from the Legion. I don't remember who this man was, but I clung to him and said, get me out of here. The story of Hennady's rescue after getting wounded at the heart of an intense firefight sounds like a true miracle. We drove fast on the BTR. The driver did a good job. The medevac took me to the hospital and after that I don't remember anything. I woke up in a hospital in Kharkiv. The man has probably survived a clinical death, but in the end his love for life and his determination for victory prevailed. I remember the guy who tore my shirt apart. At some moments I felt this black snowflakes. I remember it well. It's like you dive into cold water and you fall asleep. It was very cold. He tore my shirt apart and put his hand on my chest. I remember the warmth of his hand and how I came up to the surface again. Probably saved my life at that moment. That's the whole story of me getting wounded. I woke up back in Kharkiv. After all the ordeals he went through, Enadi is not considering quitting the army. He wants to get prosthetic legs as soon as possible and to get back to his teammates on the front line. So my current plans are simple. In order to start rehabilitation and have prosthetics, all of my wounds need to heal first. 
so I keep waiting. My stitches have been removed today, thanks God. I wait for everything to heal, then I start rehabilitation, I start walking on prosthetics, and I go back to my unit. A landmine has robbed Hennady of his legs and one eye, but no weapon is capable of destroying his spirit. I'm probably not going to make a great assault trooper or machine gunner, but we'll figure something out. We will continue pushing forward. This is not negotiable. We are not stopping until we reach the victory. There is no way that we stop. We will continue moving forward till the victory. Keep waiting for me, my friends. I'll be back. Friends, wait for me. I'll be back.